Today we're going to be taking a look at installing a backlit kit into a Game Boy Pocket. This is by far one of the most popular mods to do to the handheld because it delivers such an improvement in gameplay. While the install is a little risky, the results are definitely worth it. Backlit kits can be purchased on various sites for around $20. A single kit can either mod an original Game Boy or a Pocket like we're going to do today. A normal kit will include an LED panel, polarizer film, a single resistor, and some extra wire. You can also purchase upgraded kits that will include a Biver chip as well. A Biver chip is a pre-built circuit that inverts LCD contrast. It takes previously white portions of the screen and makes them black, and so on. A Biver chip requires that the polarizer film be flipped. When doing so, this significantly improves contrast. While the results on the original Game Boy are significant, the Pocket actually received better LCD technology in its iteration, and it doesn't show as big of an improvement. For me, the amount of work and soldering it takes to install a Biver chip into the Pocket, it just doesn't yield enough results to warrant the install itself. To start the mod, we disassemble the Pocket by using a tri-wing driver to remove the 6K screws. We can then remove the back panel carefully and remove the final three Phillips screws from the bottom of the motherboard. Once they are free, we can disconnect the LCD ribbon and lift the motherboard out of the case gently. After that, now's a good time to remove those buttons, set them in some soapy water for them to clean while we're working. Obviously, the main component that we're going to be working with is the LCD from the Game Boy. Now's a really good time to remind yourself to actually take your time. Any mistakes forward can actually result in a non-functioning Game Boy. In order to proceed, you're going to need to remove the LCD from the shell. The easiest way is to gently twist the shell around the LCD until you hear the LCD separate from the adhesive. Once you have worked all the way around the shell, you should be able to lift one corner and gently lift the LCD from the shell. Now that the panel's removed, it's now time to remove the reflective shield from the back of the LCD panel. In order to accomplish this, you're going to need an X-Acto knife or a razor. In my case, I also use a little bit of heat from my hot air station. Really, the key to this step is peeling up the reflective film into one piece without disturbing any of the ribbons on the LCD. Take your time. I start by applying low heat to the corner and working my X-Acto knife underneath the white and reflective layer. Be careful that you don't scratch the glass underneath. Once you have peeled up the corner with both layers, you can use your fingers to peel away the remaining layer from the glass. It's important to remove the layers as one. If you find yourself peeling back one layer without the other, you want to move to a different corner and try again. I found it nearly impossible to remove each layer separately without damaging the glass beneath. Now that the layers are removed, the hardest part is over. You then want to clean the LCD glass to remove any excess adhesive. For this task, I use a little bit of Windex, a microfiber cloth, and a Q-tip. And before we forget, let's remove the old lens and clean up the dirty spots. Next, we'll seat the polarizer film and LED panel in place. The polarizer film has to be set in the correct orientation. An easy way to determine this is by holding up the polarizer film up to a computer screen and making sure that it's see-through. If it's dark, you want to turn it 90 degrees and install it in this position. Before we set the polarizer film in place, we want to make sure that we peel away both protective layers from each side. Next, sandwich the polarizer film in between the LCD glass and LED panel. It's always handy to have a little canned air to work out any excess dust. Once you have the layer centered, install the LCD panel back into the shell, and then check to make sure that it's still centered. From here, we can use Kapton tape to hold our assembly in place, and finish up our mod by soldering up power to our LED panel. Ground is connected to the far left pin of the cartridge slot component, and power is pulled from the far right pin of the cartridge slot component. But before we solder in power, we want to attach the included resistor to the end of the wire, and solder into place. The resistor included in the kit helps by lowering the voltage going to the LED panel. By not including the resistor in line, the LED panel can be brighter, but it can also cause flickering or burn out the panel quicker. Now that the LED panel is soldered into place, all that's left to do is reassemble and test.
the Game Boy Pocket Backlit mod speaks for itself. While it is a very risky mod to do yourself, it's definitely worth it. And while I said it many times during the video, I'll say it again. Take your time. If you're looking to have this done to your Game Boy Pocket or Game Boy Original, you can find me at dvgamerepair.com or if you're in the Colorado Springs area, my office is at Raven Retro Games. Keep posted on my channel for more mods and repairs and remember, like and subscribe are always appreciated. Thank you again for your support and we will catch you guys later.